Hello, 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 everybody. Assalamualaikum, Sastika. Namaskar to all the listeners. Um, Michael, I don't know if I'm already on air, but it seems like I am. So we're going to start the show, and um, and uh, hopefully you're hearing me properly. And um, we are going to discuss, of course, about immigration today. Uh, anything I'm telling you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And again, the number to the office, 510-742-5887. Michael is confirming me. I'm on air. So uh, I hope you were able to, to, you can hear me right now. So the number again to the office. Five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. We will be opening the line for 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 the show. We're live today is August the twenty ninth, um, last day uh, of the month, last show of the month, and we'll be back of course next week, next month. And uh, we're going to talk of course about immigration law with all the things going on. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit um, about a few things that I am noticing, so I'm just going to cover them as we go. And of course, feel free to call. Um, you don't have to call specifically for, for one topic. It can be on family petitions, marriage petitions, asylum, you name it. Feel free to call our uh, uh, to call the studio line today and our office, studio line 510-657-1170. 510-657-1170. And again, this is Attorney Sharp Raleigh, and we are live Today is August 29, 2019. So let us talk a little bit about what's going on um, uh, on the student visa issues. One of the things we are hearing a lot right now from many people is um, the 30 days rule. As you know, if you're filing your your OPT, make sure you're filing it before the 30 days. um, And uh, if you miss it by one day, uh, they are denying cases. I had a video on that like three, four years ago but now it's becoming very very strict so be very very careful and unfortunately there's no way to fix that if they deny you uh, unless you move to another student visa and forget about the OPT for the time being etc so be very careful when you're filing the OPT don't delay on that do it on the right timing because one day will cost you so be very very careful on that and and I don't have enough information more at this point to tell you if there are other options rather than uh, pretty much going back on the regular student visa and wait, then later file for OPT. So be careful on that. Again, the studio line today is open. The number is 510-657-1170. 510-657-1170. Michael, let me know if there's anybody on, on the line. So we're going to talk, of course, about uh, various issues on immigration. And, and you know, there's no way to really cover everything so many things happening for one we have this new rule now taking away the the time spent in the military for to count as residents as you know um people who are in the military um uh, the time for example let's say you have you need five years to be completed um out of which you have to have 30 months 33 months actually uh, of physical presence in the u.s in order to get your your citizenship for the military at the time that you spent outside that time was considered as time spent in the u.s because you were you were serving the country but now it seems that president trump is taking this away so what it will do a lot of people who are eligible for citizenship are not going to get it so that's another unfair thing especially those people are defending the country and suddenly seeing that it is going to really kind of create a lot of of um, difficulties and is going to start probably on, on October 1st if it starts. Let's see if there will be any lawsuit on that, etc. So uh, this is really another sad news, sad, sad episode, of course, from the immigration side. And also other thing that we are, a lot of people ask me about lately, uh, about uh, from what I'm hearing, and again, I don't have exact information on that, but from what I'm hearing, there's a lot of waiting time now uh, mostly in all the embassies. Like, for example, I heard in for Canada, unless you are Canadian uh, resident or citizen, I don't even know exactly if it is Canadian citizen or and resident or just Canadian citizen, they they are not really processing. Uh, for example, people will just go to Canada to process the H-1B and come back to do a stamping or things like that. What happened is that we are seeing a situation where 
these people are having to wait almost six months, which is not really helpful. As for going to India to get um, a stamping, that's taking another two, three months too. So we are going to see a lot of things happening, and it's happening, and a lot of people are also getting stuck on the 221G. Um, um, unfortunately, there's no way uh, sometimes to get out of this 221G except to wait. Uh, you can always contact a congressperson, etc. But it's not really helping, um, and uh, we are seeing a lot of people stuck uh, for a little, uh, for a while now in uh, in in India, not only India but some other countries, but mostly India. So you should make sure whenever you are leaving, try your best not to leave for for stamping unless it's necessary. But I know, I, having said that, sometimes there's no other choice. There are no other choices, so you need to go for that. But it's good to talk to an attorney if you need at least a, um, an advice or a second opinion before you leave. You can call us at the office, 510-742-5887. 510-742-5887. And, Michael, I hope you're hearing me uh, properly right now. And I just wanted to let people know who just joined in. This is Attorney Sharp Raleigh for the Sharp Raleigh Law Show. And uh, we are live today. It's um, it's August 29, 2019, and we are talking about issues on immigration, especially um, those uh, issues like the student visa problems that we're seeing, the 30-day rule where people are applying one day late or something and everything is crumbling for them on the OPT. And also we just spoke about this military rule, which is not going to... Uh, which is going to bar uh, the use of the time in the military to count as residents in order to get your citizenship. And that's going to be another unfair law because a lot of people are depending on that citizenship to bring their, their, um, their spouses, their parents, etc., etc. So it is important that I hope there will be some lawsuit barring that. But until then, we have to wait and see. Things are getting really, really... Uh, I should say out of control, unfortunately. But having said that, we are still seeing a lot of approvals, and a lot of people are still doing um, doing well getting approvals. Although it's taking uh, a little bit more effort now to get an approval. Um, it used to be I will tell people, hey, you don't need a lawyer to do certain things. But now I'm telling them, no, it's good to have a lawyer to help you. For example, citizenship, I used to tell people, you don't need a lawyer to file it. But now, with all the rules and all the difficulties. I, we are recommending people to actually hire uh, an attorney to, to, to basically prepare their case so that they, because a small issue can really cost you. So, and that's where uh, a good attorney come in and you can call us if you need help. 510-742-5887. The website to check attorneyonair.com. Attorneyonair.com. And of course, um, if you need anything, uh, when it comes to immigration, it doesn't have to be just uh, for citizenship. Anything, feel free to reach out, 510-742-5887. And, um, and we were talking, of course, about the, that citizenship issue, but we're also talking about situations where people, family petitions, right? For example, marriage petitions, uh, parents' petitions, uh, you name it. It's It's now good to have an attorney, although... Are you, it, it's not impossible, of course, to do it on your own. Not only not impossible, many people do it on their own and they are able to do that. Having said that, many people also get stuck and they, they don't really know how, how to deal with that and suddenly they, they, they find themselves with more problems because they complicated the case. Um, there's another thing, if you're, you're coming on a visitor visa, and you're trying to file for a for spouse and things like that, just be careful when you file it. It's better talk to an attorney before you make the move because it can really cost you. Again, this is Attorney Shapur Ali, and we are live today on, uh, on the, at the studio. And then the, uh, we are uh, August 29, 2019, and uh, the studio line number 510-657-1170. 510-657-1170. And if you have any, you want any private consultation, call our office 510-742-5887. 510-742-5887. The website to check attorneyonair.com. Attorneyonair.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about, of course, about immigration. There's so many, uh, 
so many things happening right now uh, on the immigration front. One of the big one is, is probably the one with the student visa, which is we are seeing a lot of denials coming um, and people are just being denied because one day late in filing their OPT, etc. So be very careful. Now, the question everybody is asking, what happens if you, you are in that situation? Well, at this point, you might want to look into other options. Well, anyway, I, I recommend people to always look into other options. For example, if you want to go back to school, you can complete the school, go back to any, any regular I-20 and continue back in school on the regular F1. The second option, of course, you might be eligible for an H1B cap uh, uh, from a company which is cap exam, and that you don't have to wait April 1st to get your H1B. Or one thing which is interesting, and a lot of people don't consider it, you might qualify for something like an O1 visa. And now if you're in from countries, O1 are for people of extraordinary abilities. We talked extensively about that last time with Sharif, and, um, and we can help you on this. And ultimately with the O1, you might be eligible for the EB1A, etc. So it is very interesting to look into the other options, even though you believe you don't have options, you might have options. And also, the other thing that happens is sometimes people uh, go for J1 visas, and if they are some, from some countries, uh, for example, you are from Egypt and things like that, you can file E2 investor visa. Uh, there are many, many options, but in order for us to analyze, uh, you should do a consultation and we'll be glad to help you. And the number to the office, 510-742-5887. 510-742-5887. The number to the studio today is 510 510- Six five seven one one seven zero five one zero six five seven eleven seventy, and we are live, and we'll be glad to answer your questions if you have a chance to call. So, I apologize if if I'm not sounding uh, uh, clear on the on the radio today. Uh, my voice is a little bit messed up, but <laughs> I, I apologize again for that. So, I I highly recommend if you need help, uh, please feel free to reach out to us five one zero. Seven four two five eight eight seven. So now we have spoken about a little bit about the, the issues of student visa and also the issue we are having with people going for stamping. Um, one of the things that they are not getting an, an appointment soon, and without the appointment, things are getting really um, out of control here. Uh, and what happens is that by the time they get an appointment to leave and come back, they are seeing themselves maybe the job is not is not uh, waiting for them. I think we have one caller, right, Michael? Let me take the caller. Capra, you have here. Hello. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah, hi. hi. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Shah. Good morning. I had a Good morning, uh, question uh, regarding uh, filing a green card for my family. Mm -hmm. I can barely hear you. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, go ahead. Go yes. Ahead. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. So, go ahead. Yes, so good morning to you. Uh, so, mm -hmm. basically, I'm a U.S. citizen and I wanted to file a uh, green card for my parents. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so, I just wanted to know a little bit more information about that. Are there any laws changing pertaining to that? Or is there any urgency I need to do uh, before I could file or things like that? No, there's no law changing on that. But right now, with the way things are going, you never know. So if they if they're ready to come, uh, I would recommend filing for them. Uh, if they're already in the in in India, you can, or another country, whichever country they are in, file for their their case from there. Or if they are here visiting, you can also file from here. But be careful, be careful if you're moving from a B1 visitor visa or B2 visa to an adjustment of status because that can be tricky. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later, but. But just be careful. But I will recommend people if you want to file, file now because things, uh, if once Trump, I'm not saying if he's probably going to get a second term, things are going to get a lot more difficult because one by one he's taking a lot of benefits. Um, now he, he's going after people also, not him, but the, the administration is going after people who use the, uh, the, the benefits. So... You need to be moving fast if you want your parents to be here, or brother, sister, or uh, spouse. 
Um, hopefully the law, ha so far the law has not changed, but just to be on the safe side is good to move forward, okay? Okay, I think, okay. I think we have another call. Hi. Sure. So let Thank me take another much. caller. Thank you. This is Shah, you're live on air. Hi, uh, I wanted to check with you uh, what's the processing time for uh, adjustment of status uh, uh, for a California employee? Uh, and is there a difference for EB1 versus EB2? I mean. Okay, what do you mean by processing time? You mean to get the the answer, or you mean the to get the green card? Uh, overall, to get the EAD first step, and then uh, to get the final green okay. card. How long is it going to take? Yeah, it, it depends how the case is filed. If the case is filed properly. If you're doing, for example, EB1A, you can do it under premium, it goes pretty fast. However, to get the green card itself, it depends on your country of birth. If you're born in India, there's, there's a waiting time. Um, if you're born in another country, then the waiting time is less. No, assume, assuming the, the dates are current. I'm sorry? Assuming the dates are current. Ah, the dates, okay. If the dates are current, then you you will get the 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 fingerprint notice around six weeks to eight weeks, and okay. you get the work permit usually within ninety days to hundred days, and then okay. if everything goes as planned, within four five months you get the green card. But oh, okay. um, I, the only okay. issue is if there are uh, uh, security background check, then we we don't know it might delay longer. But apart from I, that, within six months you should get everything. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, that's great. Because online I'm seeing like ten months or more. Processing time, so I was yeah, it can fall in that, but most of those people you're seeing 10 months or more is because of the interview, right? So there is an interview for most cases now, and by the time they schedule the interview, you might get delayed. That's one thing we don't have control. Then, yes, it can fall into that, okay? Okay, but EB1A has premium? EB1A does have premium on the I-140, yes. Okay, extra $1,000 or...? Do you know how much? Uh, Fourteen hundred something. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, great. Okay, thank you so okay. much. That helps Good a lot. luck to you. Thank okay, you. let me take another Bye. caller. This is you eleven now. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Shaw. Thanks for taking this call. So I, I had a question uh, regarding EB1. Um, mm -hmm. I'm on F1 visa right now, but I have my H1 like approved uh, from my company. Mm -hmm. And mm. I, I was actually on the middle of filing my green card since I did my PhD. So, uh, but the thing is right now that if I file it maybe within next few weeks, then does it anyway impact my visa stamping? Because I'll have to, I mean, if I file it, then how does it affect if I go to India for my H1 stamping? No, if you're going for, you mean filing your EB1 um, green card, that's what you're going to file? That's yeah, yeah, so I had already prepared oh. all the documents and everything, so I was just waiting mm -hmm. that, you know, if I could, because it's it's easier to file if you have an approved H1. So I have mm -hmm. an approved H1 now, so if I file it, does it anyway affect my, uh, you know, suppose I file it now no. and... It takes some it time won't. to get it processed. It won't. It won't affect. It won't affect your H-1B because H-1B is a dual intent visa, so it doesn't get okay. affected by a green card file. However, if you file for like a student visa or a B-1, B-2, it can affect it. Doesn't mean it will, but for an H-1B, it should not because H-1B is a dual intent visa. So you're fine. You can go ahead and file. Yeah, that's why I was waiting, you know, so that I can have an approval. So I because I'll be using mm -hmm. that for GC. So that means I can I can file it maybe next month and then freely go to India and get my H one stamped. Exactly, you can. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you if so you much. If you need help, just let me know. Okay, five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Good luck to you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Wish yeah. you all the best. Okay, this is Shapira. You're live in here. Hello. Okay, so I think we lost one caller. Please feel free to call. Five, I know everybody just called in one shot. That's what happened. 510-657-1170. 510-657-1170. This is Attorney Shapurali from the Shapurai Law Group. Uh, you can check our website, attorneyonair.com or puralilaw.com. Uh, we will be glad to help you from there. So feel free to reach out. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to help. 
So now let us talk a little bit about about other issues related to uh, um, to immigration. One of them I was talking to the caller about is if you are filing a a change of status. For example, let's say your parents came to visit you and suddenly they decide to stay. You are eligible to file for a green card for them if you are a U.S. citizen. Um, a, what I recommend, though, not I recommend, but what you need to look at is what is the, was their intent when they entered. Because if they enter with the intent to file a green card, that's not right. But if you they entered on a different uh, intent, but later decide to have a green card, you you should be okay. But the way it works is now if you within the 90 days they entered, I think we have one caller. Let me take the call and then I'll I'll, I'll talk about that. This is Sharp Rally. You're live on air. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. So my question is: Do you have a uh, opinion on uh, filing a green card for Indian citizens in EB2 versus EB3? Because I see dates move a lot for EB3, <laughs> uh, yeah. but the dates for EB2 move are moving faster. So do you have any opinion on that? Yeah, that's a very good question because in the in couple of months ago I was I was praising EB3 telling everybody oh EB3 will move faster. Now I don't I'm not sure anymore. I think it's EB3 got saturated suddenly and it went backward and it will right. slow down because a lot of people file. So I think uh EB2 has EB2 has shown more consistency. It will keep moving. Hopefully, it doesn't go backwards. But EB3 mm -hmm. right now, I'm not very, very confident it will move forward. We have to wait and see because we're going to get the October 1st visa built-in coming, which is mm -hmm. usually the fiscal fiscal year, and mm -hmm. everything will be decided there. So we have to wait and see. The, as soon as okay. in next in next 10 days, we should get the visa built-in for October, and. Um, and we will know if the EB2, which where, where the trend is going, because this is a new fiscal year. We will see a lot of of jumping and going backwards. So, but mm -hmm. my feeling is that EB2 is more consistent now. EB3 seems to be very volatile, so don't count on it. Okay. Uh? Okay, that's good information. Thank you so much. Okay. Good. Good luck to you. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a very interesting question too. Uh, what happens because if you look, you listen to my show a couple of months ago, I was praising EB3. Now I'm really not praising it because it seems like it's not really doing well. So now let us talk a little bit about about that. Uh, changing status if you come on B1, B2, uh, waiting of the 90 day. The 90 day is kind of something. It used to be a 60 day rule. Now it's 90 day rule. Uh, what what happens in this 90 days is that there's a presumption of fraud if you file a green card while entering on any visa. So, well, especially entering on a visitor visa or a student visa. So it's very very important that you you make sure you talk to an attorney before you make a move. Let me take another caller. Top rally, you're live on air. Hi, Hello. I have a question. I just called uh, a little while ago. Uh, I wanted yes, to know, uh, uh, so my wife had uh, uh, came to the U.S. on H-4 uh, more than 10 years ago, and uh, after she came, she got an H-1B approved, uh, but she never worked. She never got an SSN issued, mm. uh, but it was, I think, with the change of status, uh, and but she never used that one to even uh, apply for SSN. So later she converted mm. back to an H4, went to, you know, uh, out of country multiple times and then came back and uh, not had any issue. So mm. does that uh, consider, uh, does that make her, uh, uh, those uh, six months or eight months that she stayed here uh, when October 1st uh, her H1 got kicked in and uh, but she never worked until the August uh, when she left, uh, does it make her, does mm. it make her illegal during that period or? Kind of yes and no. This is this is this is a very very interesting situation because I have a lot of those where people do change of status and they ignore it. If you look at the past, nobody really cared as long as the H-1B was not cancelled. But now USCIS, they are look they if they feel there's something that is fishy, what they mm -hmm. will do, they will ask you for check stubs all those years, uh, when you once you file for the green card. However, the fact that she left the country and she came back might reset that issue. But, yeah, it can come up at this point because they might say, okay, she, did, she didn't maintain status. As such, she was out of status. 
So your argument in this case usually is that the fact that she doesn't have a check stub, uh, as long as the company had not canceled the H-1B, she didn't lose status. But it's going to be a fight if they bring that up. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. But the good things on her side is, number one, it happened kind of some time ago. And number two is that they, they didn't really cancel the H-1B for her from the company, which I, I think uh, that's what you told me, right? They never canceled right. the H-1B for her. Okay. Uh, yeah. And number three, the fact that she she left and she came back is 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 going to be helpful for her because it kind of resets the status. But yeah, yeah expect that that you. might come as a as an issue down the road. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Okay. And if you need help, give me a call five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Do I have another caller, Michael? This is Shabra. You eleven here? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for calling. I really appreciate that because we um, we we are talking about about um, uh, about many issues in, in immigration. But now I'm going to shift gear a little bit, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about about uh, the issues related to debt settlement because this is another thing. Um, uh, uh, so it's it's something um, what we we can um, we can we can talk about in in details, but um, there are many many things that are happening right now. A lot of people are finding themselves uh, overusing their credit cards or basically kind of having issues related to debts, and we can help you on those too. Uh, we can. Um, we can uh, we can actually get rid of your debts without having you to f without you having to file bankruptcy, because sometimes you get so overwhelmed with debts and things are uh, prices are rising, especially in the Bay Area, etc. So it is um, people are kind of overusing their credit cards. So in this case, we can we can help. So um, if you have any questions on debt settlement, please give us a call five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven five one zero seven four two five eight Eight seven, and um, and we can help you pretty much on many issues related to that, like like credit cards, second mortgages. Sometimes if the house is underwater, we can help you if you have a lawsuit against you, etc. So give us a call five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. The blog to check your debt settlement attorney dot com. Your debt settlement attorney dot com. So I know my um, Michael uh, that um, Amit is is there. So give me five more minutes and then we will. We will have a meet takeover so I just wanted to talk about about the issues related to right now immigration just make sure few few tips I'm going to give you number one if you don't have to travel don't travel I repeat that if you don't have to travel don't travel because the problem is that once you leave especially if you have to go for consular processing that means to the US Embassy uh, we are seeing a lot of people getting stuck there especially in 221 G's or just getting stuck for no reason, uh, getting delayed to get uh, time for stamping. And what it does in the meantime, it is um, it creates a situation where you can lose your job, etc. So avoid it if you don't have to. I know it's, uh, a lot of people already went on vacation and just came back, so which is good. But just be careful. And if you want to assess before you travel, give me a call. We can do a consultation, a private consultation, 510 now the other thing that I wanted to mention to people, to students, right? Um, if you are going to, on a student visa and using CPT, be very careful. Don't overuse CPT because it can come back and hurt you. So that's another issue that that can really kind of hurt people. So be careful on that. Now. Last, but, uh, but uh, uh, I should say, surely we should make sure that your paperwork is properly prepared because people are, are making mistakes, and those mistakes are not resulting in RFEs but resulting in full denial. So be very careful. Get an experienced attorney to work on your case with his team, uh, with his or her team, before you move forward. And if you need help, we can help you. 510-7425-887. 510-7425-887. And also, if you have EB1, um, I will recommend that you give us a call. We are pretty good with EB1, so we can help you. Um, don't hesitate. And we have some very good, good uh, results on EB1. So uh, please reach out to us. So 
just to let you know, again, the website attorneyonair.com is there. And I don't know, Michael, is Amit there? <coughs> Hello? Hello? Okay, I think Amit is not yet there. So I'm sorry for that. I thought he was already on the phone. So I'll continue. We'll talk a little bit about about other issues of um, immigration that we are seeing right now. One other issue is we're seeing that people are really kind of not paying attention to is um, is the issue of uh, of um, of filing for for H one B, on um, and then uh, having to go for stamping, like I was mentioning earlier, because a lot of people um, are are missing the deadline or not uh, not really kind of in a in a position to to understand what is happening. They think everything is like before, but it's not. It, it's very different. H one B has become very difficult to even understand for some people and I know it's it's not like we used to file H1B as if it's just a matter of filling the forms. Now it's no longer like that. I've been saying this for a while but now more than ever it's not like that. So I think um if you need help five one oh seven four two five eight eight seven. Amit are you there? Hey sir, how are you? I'm doing well Amit, I'm doing well. Amit let me close quickly and then you can talk a little bit about debt settlement for me in Punjab, etc. So I just wanted to thank everybody. If you need any help, feel free to reach out at our office five one oh seven four two five eight eight seven and if you want to check our website attorneyonair.com, dot com, attorney on air dot com. So Amit I think you have another ten to fifteen minutes so I'll let you close and then uh, and we'll be back next week. Thank you Michael, thank you everybody, take care. Sure, uh,